from Cards to Yards, brought to you by The Adventure Begins at The Adventure Stadium, located on 1488, good old Conroe, Texas, next to that big old movie theater place. Today we're going to talk about sports cards, new product, and sports events, so take it away, Market Preston. All right, thanks, Chaz. Welcome to another episode from Cards to Yards, where we talk about all things cardboard and scoreboard related. I'm with Preston again. Preston, how's it going? Hey, Mark. It's, uh, it's going great. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it's fall. So in Texas, that means no crazy humidity. Uh, it doesn't hurt to walk outside uh, most of the time, although I'm sure we'll still have a few high 90 days left. But uh, it's just uh, there's a cool Christmas to the air. It's football season, both college and pro. And we have uh, basketball and hockey right around the corner. So it's just yeah. a, a good time to be a sports fan. That's why we live in or around Houston, Texas, because, uh, you know, the fall and the winters are absolutely fabulous. Uh, you know, we, we go through a few months of hell to uh, enjoy several months of heaven. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think October is one of my favorite times weather-wise in Texas. Yes. It, you know, it can still get dicey because it's Texas. Uh, it can change every day, but uh, – and then also – you know, it seems that fall's just the time for sports, even though we're not really ever starved as sports fans, especially with no. the ability of internet and streaming and international feeds and soccer and all that. But, uh, you know, in Texas, it's football, right? So That's right. Or the uh, Astros, you know, which is about to be in full swing, playoff time coming up. So exciting. Yeah, uh, their magic number's been won for like the last week, I think, but hopefully we'll... <laughs> Hopefully they'll get it together uh, real quick and wrap up the division here. Baseball we'll focus on probably in the next week or two as those wild cards and are set. And uh, and when we start talking about award season and obviously like we'll be able to see like rookie performances, who played the whole year, who contributed and all that. And uh, we'll talk about baseball here in a little bit. First up, let's talk about some industry news. Quick question. Would you buy a one-of-one hand-signed Patrick Mahomes rookie card for $5? Uh, yeah. Would you buy uh, a share of it for $5? Possibly. <laughs> so so a, company, <laughs> um, a company has begun to sell stock, $5 stock shares in a Patrick Mahomes rookie card. So this is a uh, fractional ownership platform called Collectible. And it's issued an initial public offering, otherwise known as an IPO, for the one-of-one one playoff contender's rookie Super Bowl ticket autograph card. Now, obviously, it's one-of-one. One, it's hand-signed. It's his rookie year with the rookie card logo on it. So this is one of the most desirable Mahomes rookie cards out there. Uh, there's a market cap of 2852500 for this card. I'm not sure exactly how they came up with that number, other than just to kind of average the sale of other one of ones. Um, and w as we reported a few episodes ago, his National Treasures one of one shield card sold earlier this year for $4.3 million. Now, there's a lot to unpack there, but uh, the idea of this is just wild to me. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I'm on the same side of the fence with you there. I think it's a little uh, wild. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit older uh, you know, being in my early 50s and such, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it seems the younger generations are a lot more into the virtual, uh, you know, partial ownership of, of certain things that, that I don't really f find appealing myself because I'm, I like to have something tangible in my hands, you know, if I'm going to have ownership in it, unless it's a stock or something, which, you know, this is precisely you know what they're doing is they're trading like like a stock because that, that's what it is but um when it comes to collectibles and, and sports cards and memorabilia and such uh, for me uh, something in my hands is is the only way to go personally and uh to me there's not a lot of research done on this as far as in like who decides when it's time to sell because let's say like let's say i bought five hundred dollars into this so i own a hundred shares of it and let's say someone comes along and they're like hey i'll buy that for you know 5.6 million that would double my money as one of those shareholders right i would be like yeah sure i'll take it 
But someone else might be like, no, 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 let's wait. Let's wait till he wins the Super Bowl or two or three. It's like, who decides when this is going to be sold, for how much, how you're going to sell it? Um, if you've ever seen the episode of The Simpsons where Milhouse and Bart don't have enough money, so they pull their money together and buy the first appearance of Radioactive Man number one. Yes. So they're sharing that. this comic. Or if mm-hmm. you've ever done that, like I think there was a time where I didn't have enough money to get a, a Nintendo game I wanted, so I pulled it together with a friend. Don't do that. It's a disaster. <laughs> like you can't, especially <laughs> like in in the comic situation. It's like one of them wanted to read it, one didn't, and then they end up ruining it because they they yep. keep arguing. And it's like, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm with you on that. Uh, I don't really want to share it. It'd be great if I pulled that out of a pack. Uh, that'd probably be the only way I get something this high end, but uh, interesting idea. And like you said, with with Dogecoin, with cryptocurrency, with e trading, um, I guess uh, for lack of a better phrase, and to, I'm, I'm, yeah, for lack of a better phrase, I'm just gonna say the kids are into it. I mean, it's just yeah. like that's you know, so it's cool, but I don't know with this card in particular how much room for growth there is right now now if he wins another two or three super bowls yeah absolutely yeah and i mean uh, really you know when when you're thinking about the big picture even if if let's say that card doubles what their estimated value is you invest twenty dollars you're going to make 20. wow that's that's really not a whole lot for me to jump up and down about and get excited about uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it's more of a novelty than anything else. It's kind of like the Green Bay Packers, you know, the fans own the Green Bay Packers. They all have a share in the team, but there's really no tangible ownership of anything. So, uh, you know, you, you kids and your, and your darn NFTs and digital formats. Yeah. Um, and, and it is a real tangible thing, but only one person's going to be able to hold it. I did find it funny that they're like, uh, a limited fifty thousand dollar buy in within the first fifteen minutes. I guess they thought some really rich person was just gonna buy it, try to buy the whole card or a majority of the card. Yeah. Uh I could just see like two rich guys fighting over it to the point where they just like cut it in half a la I love Lucy or something, put a piece of yeah. tape in the middle and be like, I get the top half, you get the bottom half. I get yeah. all the pass yards, you get all the rush yards. Now if you're talking high rollers, you know, big wigs throwing in a few hundred thousand, a million dollars on something like this, then yeah, I think that in, in that realm of, of reality, then it, it could possibly be something that would be a, a, a financial uh, windfall perhaps at, at some time or another in the future. But uh, it, on a small scale, it, it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't pop to me. Right. If you're throwing in a hundred dollars and then you find yourself needing a hundred dollars to pay rent the next month, it's- uh, no, not for you. But if right. if if you can't remember, you know how many millions you invested last year, you know, then go for it. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's a new, it's a new thing. It's like sort of like uh, it seems like digital currency and NFTs. It's just like a new toy, a new way to invest, yeah. a new art form. I get it. Uh, yeah. The card is hyper desirable. I can't imagine like other than like a, a Tom Brady playoff contender, which you know, you know. Um, it's just unattainable <laughs> for everyone. Uh, I don't even know if Tom Brady would be able to buy back his own uh, one of one you know, uh-huh. rookie card. And I don't, I don't know if there was a one of one actually back then. Uh, I don't but there think was there definitely was. Hand, hand signed. I just think that, that there's, there's the thousand autographed uh, contenders, and, and that was it. You know. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so no, nothing against the card, but I think I'll keep my five dollars. You know, <laughs> Mark. I mean, could you imagine, Mark, if there was a, a Brady autograph one on one rookie out there? I mean, you, you think Patrick Mahomes is expensive? <laughs> yeah. I, if there was a one on one Brady, it'd probably be a fifty to hundred million dollar card. Yeah, I don't think. Like I said, I don't think Brady could even afford to buy it back. Yeah. And, and you know, maybe money wise, but no one would sell it to him. Uh, it'd be interesting if they. I don't. I don't know why they've never made coach autograph cards. Because well, Belichick have, would be pretty desirable. They have, uh, to a very small extent. There are some sets along the way that have had some coach autographs. You know, I, I ran across one from uh, SPX oh. the other day from like the mid '90s. It was uh, uh, one of the coaches for uh, Miami. I, I can't remember who it was at this time, but. But yeah, I've, I've run across a few coach autographs. They're 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 not very uh, prevalent, but they're they're sprinkled in here and there. 
it would just be interesting to see how a, a Belichick one of one would stand up against really any player or anyone else. There's but. there's probably some Belichick uh, autograph cards out there and in, in, in some cardboard. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind looking those up myself and and grabbing a couple. Uh, th- thanks for the uh, the insight. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, hey, if you if you were to put together a big Belichick collection, did you know that now on CSG you can put it in a registry? And everyone yeah. can see and be and marvel at your Bill Belichick collection and be super jealous. Uh, the Certified Sports Guarantee, one of the up-and-comers in the card grading industry, has launched their online set registry. This will allow collectors to track and compare collections. Uh, to me, Preston, it makes it look like CSG is really dedicated to growing quickly in an industry where PSA and Beckett have been seen by most collectors as the only grading option pre-pandemic. And now, like, since the pandemic, I mean, you go into, if you go into eBay and type in graded card, you'll see, like, nine or ten companies, and some of the slabs and labels look weird. There's even one company out there that they do a red and white label to look like PSA, but it's not PSA. Uh, I think that CSG is starting to stand out as, like, a contender for that third spot right now. And, and hey, the longer Beckett and PSA hold out as far as, like, letting regular people <laughs> right. submit submit cards because uh, psa the cheapest option is 150 and i think beckett is still shut Too down weird. as far as as yeah. card yeah uh, oh, oh is there is there premium slot open I, i'm not 100 percent sure right now on the current status of beckett but i thought they had uh, a higher tier like psa did for around the 150 to 200 dollars range as well but i, I could oh, okay. be still- but, but yeah but, it's, it's, yeah so, so CSG with with their uh, uh, with their database of, of the cards that they're creating here, you know, it, they really kind of had everything in place already as far as their infrastructure and the experience with this type of of registry uh, service, of course, because you know they did coins and, and comic books before they jumped into the sports card arena. So uh, these guys are professionals. They know what they're doing. So uh, I would expect only only the best and, and most exciting stuff going ahead for, for these guys, especially when it comes to the, the set registry uh, processes. And for people who have just jumped into this, like either mid pandemic or post pandemic, they may not ha- they may not have that you know affiliation that was pre established with PSA and Beckett. To where yeah. they're wary of going to third, they might just be like, "Hey, this is a good deal." I mean, because they still have. I checked last night. Uh, they have the bulk option for like twelve. I think it's twelve dollars a card. Like if oh. you submit, if you submit fifty cards to CSG, they they have I didn't that. Know that. They opened up their bulk option, uh, the lower tier. I didn't know that. Yeah, CSG uh, has done that, and I think if you send in like one card, it might be like thirty or thirty-five. But it's it's. Yeah. <laughs> It's so much more affordable right now. So we'll see how that goes and as they grow. And if anyone else, you know, pops into that top four or five grading companies. But right now it looks like CSG is really trying to go full steam ahead. Um, Pretty impressive, like how fast they've been able to come together and do this. Uh, Hey, would you like to get game use gear for the newest NHL expansion team? Well, get cracking. Uh, mm-hmm. Sorry for sorry for that bad pun, Preston. But I'm excited <laughs> about hockey. Uh, the the Seattle Kraken. Um, I love the name. I think Seattle is yeah. a great city. I dig it's it. It's a too. it's a fun city, but I'm really jealous because Houston needs a hockey team. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so with you. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that Seattle could get a, a hockey team before Houston, but. I've been preaching for years and years, you know, I think Houston would, would completely support a hockey team. Uh, we love sports here in, in Texas and, and in Houston, and and we support our basketball, baseball, and football teams. And, and I think that uh, if we, did, we just got a little taste of what NHL live hockey was all about, then people would, would jump on board really, really quick because it, it truly is one of the most exciting uh, sports to watch in person. I mean, the playoff hockey – live there's nothing else like it the speed is absolutely amazing and uh yeah I, i'm kind of bummed that, that we didn't get the team but hey seattle good for those guys uh you know they got they got the supersonics ripped away so at least they they got some uh, they got they got some hockey coming their way so good for them 
Yeah, I wonder if there's any uh, young people getting into the hobby that go to to purchase a high-end Kevin Durant rookie, and they're like, what's Supersonics? What alternate jersey is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is there's this? <laughs> no, there's a few. And, you know, the Kraken is it's kind of dear to me because I saw that movie, uh, Clash of the Titans, when okay. it came out in the theaters in, like, 1984 or whatever it was. So I've always been a fan of the Kraken. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so Houston fans, you can't get an expansion team, but you can get an expansion team's gear. The McGay, the McGray group has partnered with the Seattle Kraken to provide fans with officially licensed pucks, jerseys, and other used gear. It will be available through both sales and auctions with a letter of authenticity. Uh, and again, the, the Kraken just started. It's an exciting time. They do an expansion draft. And the uh, NHL, which is comparable to how the Texans put their first team together uh, when they first started. Um, a lot of controversy behind that because there's a lot of teams out there who had to uh, put and vet important veterans and young players up in this draft. And uh, so some people think expansion team and they're like, oh, they're going to tank and be last place. Well, the Vegas Knights proved everyone wrong back in 2017. Yes. I mean, almost immediately being a contender, it's crazy. And, and have stayed good. So... Yeah, um, but very surprising. And so now the NHL has 32 teams, and the Kraken will begin the regular season with everyone else in mid-October. So, uh, but yeah, hockey's awesome. Uh, Arrows games were were great. If anyone ever went to an Arrows game, just amplify yeah. that by like five to ten for an NHL playoff atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, every bit. Know what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, because I was exposed to the Arrows at a pretty young age in the 90s, and then I moved to Denver and, and got to go see Avalanche play live oh. in the playoffs and, and the, during their Stanley Cup run. And, yeah, the difference was <laughs> it's, it's like watching high school versus professionals. Did you Were you able to catch the uh, Red Wings coming into Colorado and playing the Avalanche? Um, I, I, I probably saw the Red Wings. I don't know. I went to five or six games, you know, that one year. Um I can't remember to be honest with you, but I might, I know the Red Wings and the, the Blackhawks were were huge rivalries at the time. Yeah, because uh, they had that infamous. Uh, I think it was a, went over a few games where Claude Lemieux started a bunch of junk and then <laughs> turtled yes. in the middle of the ice, and then even the goalies. Yeah, Patrick Waugh. Oh yeah, going at it, man. That was it crazy. was that was crazy. Uh, Look up highlights from Avalanche, Red Wings, and the mid '90s if you have no idea what I'm talking about, and or just goalie fights, you'll see it. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> so uh, from the ice to the turf slash grass. Did you know sports news can affect the card market? Guess what, man? That's the next topic. So NFL, and look, it's going to be NFL heavy, right? Because it's the fall, it's football. We're in Texas. Yes. But on the national stage, it's you know, it, it, it's all about NFL right now, at least for right now, until uh, NBA starts. Because uh, it, it's it's unfortunate. This is a very exciting week in baseball, which we'll get to in a second. But people just still care about the NFL so much. What do you think it is about football in America that just draws us I, to TV Sundays and Mondays? You know, I don't know what it is. I, I think it's just the most exciting sport to watch on television. You know, it, it is. I think there's other sports uh, to, the, you know, when you're in person are, are more exciting to watch than, than football is. But as far as a television product and as far as, uh, you know, from from the, you know, the fan duel and the, and the betting aspect of, of the sport, it's the most fun, you know, for people to follow in the fantasy leagues. You know, really, I think when football – completely exploded was when fantasy uh, became uh, a, a huge success across the country, you know, pretty early on. And, and then then you had, you know, people that really didn't care about football. They were all of a sudden football fans because, hey, they're in a fantasy league with their buddies, you know. So um, there's a lot of reasons why football is where it's at. It's always been hugely popular. But, you know, when fantasy came along and, and now with the collectible market, it's just juiced it up that much more. Absolutely. That's a great point. I mean, to the point right. where you have like DraftKings and just like uh, weekly fantasy almost almost mm -hmm. daily in, in certain sports where it's applicable. And uh, I, football is definitely more cinematic, like uh, again, referencing The Simpsons. They showed Homer the baseball game once and he had stopped drinking 
and it just had like the baseball announcer go and now there's a beach ball thrown on the field it'll take a few (laughs) minutes to clear i love baseball because it's almost like televisual therapy you can put it on and just like it's very soothing and if you like your home team like the astros and the announcers like i i love those guys right now um it's cool but football is just impactful cinematic it's i think it's easy to follow not everyone's going to be like a football you know x's and o's uh expert but it's just and then you have like the household names like brady and now mahomes and and of course cowboys america's team and everything's you know just yep. synonymous with football so holidays um, thanksgiving i mean you know we there's so much that are associated with with football you know and and just playing it you know at a younger age you know got me really into it so uh yeah, football is just wonderful. I love it. And, and you just have a lot of terms that are used in everyday life from football, like touchdown yep. or two-minute drill, which apparently right. a, right. apparently, so, apparently, the 49ers didn't know that two-minute drill is a thing because one thing <laughs> I learned one thing I learned a long, long, long time ago, a long time ago, never give a good quarterback the ball back ever if you can, but definitely not with like time on the clock. Yeah. Um, Elway was the most famous at this, right? The the two minute drill being yes. able to like. It's exactly what I was thinking about. Was Elway. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he got up to forty, but he had at least like high thirties as far as two minute comebacks. Um, yes. So Aaron Rodgers, there was a lot of fuss made about him in the off season, and he kind of looked like you know, how oh, does he even want to play anymore? What's going on? Like he's like, well, I'll tell my truth when it gets to be, and it's just like. Well, are you, are you going to play or not, dude? And and then from the Packers' perspective, you're sort of like, eh, this guy's getting old. Is he worth it? Well, yes, he's worth it because the 49ers, the 49ers gave him the ball back with, like, what, a minute and a half, no timeouts, immediately throws, like, this 30 37 yard 37 seconds. Yeah. It, it's just 37 crazy. 37 seconds, dude. No it, timeouts. And, and yeah. It, yeah. It was silly. And, and uh, you know, in college, you at least get a few seconds stopped while they reset the first down marker. You don't in the pros. So you're having, yeah, yeah. he's having to orchestrate all the linemen and everyone running down, spiking the ball a few times. And it just makes it look easy. And the 49ers it, are like, are heartbroken. You feel bad for their team. But, uh, but the Packers are like, yeah, we still have Aaron Rodgers. And they win 30 to 28. And it's guys like Aaron Rodgers that makes football as popular as it is because he is just a blast to watch. I mean, man, when they threw the ball down and we're in field goal range and, and he spikes the ball and then he looks at the sideline and he gets down on his knees and gives it one of the fist pumps, you're like, yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. Aaron Rodgers is is truly one of the greatest ever. Yeah, so uh, his stock's not going down anytime soon. That's what we're no, going to say not. there. Um, so, so moving to some, some quarterbacks in different phases of their career, uh, and this one hurts. So you had just mentioned last week about, man, all the primetime NFL games have been great. They've been super watchable. They've been really close. And, <laughs> and, and then, and I was like, well, I hope that streak continues with the Texans. And then it didn't. <laughs> it did for about six minutes. It did for about six minutes. Um, six look, minutes. It's pretty exciting. So. What I'm speaking of is that the Panthers came to town. They played the Texans. Uh, the The bottom line is that Carolina won the game, and uh, they're off to a 3-0 and start. Now, we can make all these excuses like Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod Taylor. That would be my three top excuses, that he was hurt. Because <laughs> I, really I really think the Texans were on to something with him at, with QB. But um, you're kind of like... You look over on the Panthers sideline and, you know, obviously Cam Newton's been gone for a couple of seasons now, but you look and you're like, who's that quarterback? Sam Darnold. Oh, I remember that guy. He was like the world's biggest bust. If you ask any Jets fan. <laughs> and then now all of a sudden, you know, and we know how New York is and the media is and the expectations there. But do you think that Sam Darnold's for real? Like, was it just this change of scenery he needed? Um. Partially, I think the jury's still out um, when it comes to Darnold. I think he's definitely better than what he showed uh, in the in the Jets organization. Uh, he really didn't have anything around him. He was not in a position to succeed. The you know the coaching staff there just didn't put anything around him. 
uh, not to mention uh, injuries and, and things of that nature, poor draft picks over the course of several years. But yeah, I think that uh, that he's got some upside. Absolutely, one one hundred percent. He he looks really good and consistent uh, in the first three games of the season. You know, he made a few you know, minor mistakes against the Texans early, but uh, but he finished the game really strong. Any way you look at it, it has to be feeling really good for him to look at a paper, see the standings, and see the Jets at 0-3. Yeah. And and he may even feel bad for the quarterback there now because it's like, look, I tried to tell you guys, but okay, put him in Everybody the same. Everybody feels bad for Zach Wilson, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's just to put him – they just repeat it. They just repeat exactly what you just said and put him – put now put Zach Wilson another – Top tier, top draft prospect uh, in the same situation. Uh, and let's not forget, let's not. I'm not going to get too carried away uh, because there's a quarterback named Tom Brady that's also in the Panthers division now. So yeah. So I so but we'll see. It's it's a. Uh, I like when someone rises from the ashes, even if for a second. And and I know it's not that dramatic, but. New York football media and fans made it seem that dramatic. Like, oh, Darnold's a bust. Nope. <laughs> and yep. he's ah, – jury's still out. We'll just say that. Um, well, there's, there's been – there's he's not the first quarterback that's had a change of scenery that that really, uh, you know, turned his career around. So I'm, I'm, right. I'm rooting for the guy. I think, I think he's a good guy, and, and I want to see him do well. Yeah. Uh, thinking way back, um, speaking of John Elway, there was a guy he played – there was a guy, there was a quarterback, he didn't do anything for the 49ers, but then when he got to the Chiefs, he was pretty good. Joe Montana, you might have heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was good. Uh, but yeah, he moved of, up on the, the, the Oilers. I can remember that. That was very I, unpleasant. I, I remember listening to that game. Yeah, it was bad. Um, speaking of scenery change, the Rams are also 3-0 and under their new old quarterback, Matt Stafford. Uh, yeah. Look, Matt Stafford was not necessarily run out of Detroit, but I think at some point, like you said, if you're not going to build around a QB and give them the offensive line, the weapons, uh, at some point it's just time to move on. And and it has to be kind of a hard thing to judge because once your quarterback gets to a certain age uh, and veteran year status, it's like, well, we don't know how, if we have time to build up these linemen and everything around them. So so then you get in a state where it's like, well, do we spend the number one pick on – or, or the, the first-round picks on wide receivers to get them that help, or do we spend it on linemen who may not develop for three years, or do we just go on the defense to try to help him get the ball back? And I think it just came to a point where it's like um, Matthew Stafford had reached his ceiling in Detroit, and Detroit had reached their ceiling with Matt Stafford. But now it's looking great with the Rams. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. The Rams are loaded uh, on both sides of the ball. I think they got a lot of weapons, and that's even considering you know, losing uh, Cam Akers before the season started. Can you imagine how good this team would be if they still had Cam Akers on the active roster? Oh, my gosh. But uh, I, I'll i be honest with you. I'm not one bit surprised. I've always been a fan of, of uh, Matt Stafford, and I kind of saw this coming. I, I really, really believed that he was going to have a tremendous season this year uh, with the change of scenery and, and a much better, uh, more talented team around him. So uh, uh, great for the Rams. I think it's good for the NFL. And it's, it's certainly great for Matt Stafford. Oh, yeah. it's it, And again, 3-0 start very, very early, but uh, just looks good. And you mentioned, I mean, they have a three-time defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. Yeah. So in a few years, if this guy keeps up that pace, we're going to be talking about him as one of the greatest NFL players yeah ever yep. uh he's having like a jj watt type run and and he's you know still on the rise which is incredible oh yeah. uh, well well now preston we're gonna do something on uh card crs that we may never do again and that's talk about a kicker and feature a kicker because yeah. justin justin tucker kicks an nfl record 66 yard field goal to put the yes. ravens ahead of the lions 19 to 17 uh one of those undervalued uh positions things you take for granted uh i mean unless of course you're an ace ventura fan and then you you remember laces out and all that uh going back and uh how important i mean 
actually we we talk about kicking like it's just sort of like oh it's just part of the game you know we're not going to pay these guys millions but then you think about it and it's like you know what that trend did change because i know adam vinatieri got some money and some other kickers have gotten some money over the years and then you think about how many super bowls have been decided by a bad kick yeah and uh even if it's let's say even if it's three out of 50 (laughs) that's still a lot like if you ask any owner, hey, would you pay a kicker a million if you can win a Super Bowl? They'd be like, yeah. Would you pay him three? Yeah. Would you pay him five? Well, probably. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, what did you think about that kick? I thought it was the most exciting moment of uh, the entire uh, weekend. It was it was phenomenal. Set a uh, NFL record uh, that had been, I guess, stood for about 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, since yeah. the last one. Uh, Matt Prater, I think, had a 64-yarder. And uh, so, yeah, not only did he beat the record, but he beat it by two yards. And, you know, going back before Prater, the record had stood for for about 40 years. So it was one of the longest standing uh, NFL records in history to be broken. And I don't know if anyone's ever going to break 66 yards again. And to, and to do it in that situation with the game on the line, I mean, it, it was it was awesome. I'm not a Baltimore fan by any means or any stretch of the imagination, but but man, was that exciting to watch. And, and I'm just glad I was able to to witness it. Yeah. And um, they have another, you know, quarterback that we're going to keep an eye on for years to come. Lamar Jackson, he uh, converted a, a fourth and long to even yeah, get them into 19. that situation. Yeah. So it's got to be, it's got to be uh, just a big confidence boost on it, every side for that. Yeah. And, you know, as far as, as, you know, collectability when it comes to kickers, you know, they're they're down the list like like relief pitchers pretty much in, in baseball. So uh, but there are the exceptions and Justin Tucker's certainly one of them. Uh, his stuff has got to be skyrocketing right now. Uh, you know, he is probably going to go down as the, the greatest of all time, the goat uh, as far as kickers. Um, you know, Vinatieri's right up there with him. Uh, you know, so you've got a handful of guys. You know, three or four kickers, and then you got Ray Guy as far as punters go. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that, you mentioned, that are actually worth a little bit in in the uh, in the card market. But outside of that, you know, not a whole lot. They're they're anomalies. You're just not going to find a whole lot of kickers that are going to have long term investment value and and hold their value. And uh, as a Texans fan, I can attest, uh, kickers are important. And when you don't have a really great yes. one, you notice like you. Like, if you're a team out there and you have a great kicker, you may never notice. But there's going to come a time where you're like, oh, that guy was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going Kickers back. To, in my brain, I'm going back to the Aldo Greco days and whatnot. Um, for those Love of you Aldo know, Greco. Yeah. Hey, I do too. And also, he was a really good amateur golfer. Fun fact. Yes. He, he really was. But uh, So the Ravens' uh, win was also impressive because they were without 11 key players. And when I say key players, I mean players that count a million dollars or more against that cap. (laughs) So, like, key players from uh, due to injury or COVID protocols. um, And obviously, you know, special teams. It just shows, yeah, man, and that guy's special. So um, we may never talk about kickers again on this show, but there you go. Justin Tucker, your moment in the sun. <laughs> I mean, other than, you know, being the one of the greatest kickers of all time, like Preston said. And then, uh, so I kind of took a jab at the Astros because their magic number's been sitting there uh, all week at, at like one, and, you know, they got swept by the A's. Uh, but it looks like they're going to make it. I mean, you know, they, they're just like either a win or someone else is lost away from clinching, wrapping up uh the division that the yeah. AL West. So, you know, they've been on a collision course with, with the White Sox now for about six or eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, not, you know, nothing to see here. You know, move along. It's, it's everything as usual. I think the Astros kind of get bored, okay, with with uh, with the game because they know they're a superior team. They're waiting for the playoffs. I don't think it's it's going to be a big deal. You know, they just got to get one win and they're in. And uh, and they're, they're still ahead of the White Sox in standing. So they still got the home field, you know, locked up, hopefully, for the first round. Uh, you know, we can squeeze off a few wins in the next few days. And well, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, close races going on. Yeah, like in the AL, it's, 
you know, it's decided except for the wild card. And that looks like unless one of the teams, along with the Astros and the AL West, just really catches fire the last week of the season, it looks like it's going to all come from uh, the Yankees division because it's, you know, the Rays sit firmly top and they're, they might have 100 wins, uh, so they can't be caught. But then you have the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the baby Blue Jays, uh, mm-hmm. who has everyone's son uh, and or brother in Yuli Gurriel's case uh, on that roster. It'd be fun to see baby Vigio make the yeah. playoffs. I would root, I would root for that for sure. Uh, of course, that's for the that's for the uh, wild card though, where you basically play and then you'd be have to play the top team, which again would be in their division against the Rays. So kind mm-hmm. of a. We we don't know where, I guess, other than the Astros are going to be playing the White Sox. And like you said, that's been set for a while. Yeah, um, it, it, there's going to be one really good team that's that's going to get knocked out in a single game. I know that yeah. much in both divisions. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and, uh, and probably one team that misses that single game. Uh, one good team that misses even getting to that single game. Because there's yeah. just not enough. <laughs> there's not enough spots. <laughs> I mean... So, uh, but then on the NL side, you have the Dodgers and Giants have already gotten 100 wins. They already have 100 win seasons. That's crazy. I, yeah. I know, you know, I thought the Astros were going to do it, but they kind of fell off in the last month. Um, they've done it a few times. Astros, I, you know, had 100 lost seasons. Uh, so we, as fans, definitely deserve the 100 win seasons that yeah. they had. I'll just put that on record. If the Astros had won 100 this year, they would have been the first team in, in Major League Baseball history to ever have uh, four straight seasons with at least 100 wins or more. Oh, wow. So then they definitely would have been the first to do that and then yeah. have <laughs> 100 lost seasons in a row. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like we said, on the other side, the Rays may get to 100, but Dodgers and Giants already have 100. Yeah. Uh, when this when the last week starts, uh, when the last week started, Two games separated the Dodgers and Giants. Of course, one of the craziest rivalries. And I will say that Atlanta and Philly are very close. Two and a half games going into Monday's games. But I think Atlanta is going to wrap that up. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right about Atlanta. And, and you know, can you imagine if the Dodgers, it's looking like they're going to be the wild card. If they were to lose that wild card game. Are you kidding me? A hundred plus win team and they're and they're gone in one game. That you know, I, as much as I, I have so much disdain for the Dodgers, I I, I don't know if I really want to see that happen. I, uh, I, if it happens, I probably won't shed a tear. But you know, the the logical side of me says you know baseball is better for it if they stay in the playoffs. But uh, you know, we'll see what happens. It's it's crazy uh, with with the wild card single game playoff. I, I think it creates a lot of excitement and, and uh, a lot of uncertainty. <sighs> so many mixed emotions about that. As an Astros fan, I'm just tired of like, no one's going to ever stop talking about 2017. Part of me gets that, but at some point we're going to have all new players. They still yeah. never really like proved everything on every level, at least not to our knowledge. They haven't released that. Part you know, of we me got to drink in the hate, my friend. Just we do. So because the Astros are going to be a permanent fixture in the playoffs for the well, next decade. Well, well, part of I think uh, there might be one way to get past it, and it's this: I think the Astros and Dodgers need to meet in the World Series. Yeah, I, I think they just need to redo, and we need to just destroy them. Get the gloves but, on and let's go. I, 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 so maybe we should not root for the Dodgers to get eliminated. Exactly. But, I but either way, the I don't know. But either way, there's, I got the angel and the devil, and they're both I, wearing Astros right? hats. Yeah. You know? I, I don't want to be here in this mess when we win the World Series. Oh, well, the Dodgers weren't there. You know, <laughs> yeah. To kill the Dodgers as well. Absolutely. But yeah. Michael Jordan wasn't there. But Michael Jordan wasn't there. No. Dude, it was yeah. 20 freaking seven years ago. Get over it. Right. Alajuan was the greatest. I know I'm talking about basketball in the baseball segment, but I just had we, to put we that out went there. The top, we only went through the top <laughs> three teams in, in the in the, uh, div, in, not the in the conference uh, on our way yeah. to the championships. I know. So. I know. Uh, well, so with all the teams, you look in the standings and you see all the different symbols for, like, teams who clinched or teams who won the division. Then you see ease by 
teams' names, and you realize, oh, these are all the teams that are eliminated. And once again, you see the Angels being eliminated. <laughs> and yeah. you just and you really just think, uh, like we've had several players that that never ha- had tasted true like championship playoff success come through Houston, and you do feel bad for this guy. But what do you think this means for Trout's legacy if he can never win in October? Um, man, I've thought about this for years, to be honest with you, when it comes to Trout and his legacy and his popularity. You know, it, it's amazing that a guy that plays for such a dumpster fire of an organization has gotten as popular as Mike Trout is, to be honest with you. And the fact that you've got this caliber of player on your roster and you've had him there for so long and, and yet you still are showing ineptitude as far as, as, as putting this, this franchise in a, in a positive direction going forward. They're just in this perpetual mediocrity you know, phase that it, it just never ends. It's like this, this hamster wheel of madness, uh, you know, f- as far as I'm concerned when it comes to Trout and, and Otani and, and, it's got to it's got to drive him insane. I, I mean, personally, I, I think, you know, because, you know, damn well that, that deep down this guy just wants to win and, and he'd probably give up a few of his home run crowns or whatever just to be able to go to the playoffs, you know, much less win a World Series. So for him, it, it, it hurts me. I think it's 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 not good for the, the, the game when you've got one of the game's absolute all-time greatest players that's never even been in a, in a playoff game. It's it's kind of bizarre, and, and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't, but I also don't want him to go to the Yankees. And, oh. I, and, I, and I don't know any other team out there that can take on this enormous contract. Like, I, it, you don't ever want to go, well, it's all – you don't want to, like, blame the player, but it's like he did sign that insane contract. I mean, I, I – yeah. He looks he looks like he'd be Yankee, you know, Mr. Clean Shaven, prim and proper dude. He'd fit right in with the Yankees. I'm uh, I'm ashamed to say, but uh, yeah, I, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> I, I and I so, also want to I, I want to see him have a healthy season too. I yeah, mean, that's, been, that's becoming an issue. And, and yeah. when you go all out like him, like the same thing happened to Acuna going after like a, a fly ball. I mean, it's just like these guys go all out every day and it's a wonder that there's not more, you know, torn ACLs and and yeah. just long-term injuries, but uh and then as far as Otani goes, I mean, someone asked him about it, he's like, "I want to win." And it's like, "Well, then you're probably not going to stay with the Angels." <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if both of those guys were gone within the next, you know, few years. I'm not sure what their contract situations are like, but once those contracts are up, I, I just I don't see why Mike Trout would stay there unless something drastic happens, you know, between now and next year, you know, into next season. So I I think it's Otani would look great in the Astros jersey. I'm just gonna say <laughs> yeah. stay stay within the division. I mean, how incredible would that be? And then there's questions yeah. about should he pitch, how much should he pitch? The guys I I mean, ooh. Power, power hitting year for sure. So it'll be interesting. So, and, and we'll get back, you know, to baseball in an episode or two because obviously everything will be lined up and we'll know the front runners for the awards and then playoffs. And then, wow, if you ever want to view card collecting as a stock market, just go to eBay after every playoff game in the baseball. Like, you'll right. see, especially if uh, someone throws a no hitter or a perfect game or something. Yep. Uh, it's, uh, you know, Mr. October. It's, uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, and just real quick, some soccer news. I like to throw this out every once in a while. And you had called this earlier, but, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo made a triumphant return to his old football club, Manchester United. And they actually got him on a pretty lean transfer fee for like less than 10 million because he is getting up there in age. But here's the thing. Um, Brady's old. Ronaldo's old. Uh, it doesn't matter. Is it? None of this matters because not only did the spark an interest in Ronaldo trading cards, but the team stock prices rose nearly 10%. Here's the thing about that. You might be like, okay, 10%, whatever. Well, if you don't know Manchester United, look up the top 10 most valuable teams in sports, okay? Because they're now worth $4.65 billion. And for context, Dallas Cowboys are... Uh, 
number one, and I think they're over six million now, which I was kind of surprised by. There's been a lot of inflation on value, team value, but that's crazy. Uh, and also, Ronaldo recently became the all-time leading scorer in international competition, scoring his 111th goal for Portugal in World Cup qualifying in their last game. Um, so we've said this before. We've talked about Messi. We've talked about Mbappe. We've talked about Ronaldo. That's the top three as far as collecting go. So I just wanted to throw that out there for context. You've yeah. said you said since we started the show, soccer is it in the future. Um, maybe not here, but worldwide, there's lots of collectors and lots of money going into collecting for soccer. Yes, absolutely. Ronaldo's so, one of the best. Uh, one of the best. Uh, and... So just to give people, you know, I just want like to give people context. So when we say, hey, soccer cards, they'll know, oh, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> hey, all you sports fans, here's all the new products you want to get your grubby fingers all on. And so what are you excited about coming out within the next week or so? Yeah, so uh, coming out the, this next week, um, we've got uh, 2021 Panini Spectra Baseball. Uh, it's going to be a really cool product. Uh, it comes with four autos per box, lots of subsets, uh, some RPAs and, and jerseys, and Legends all-time great autographs are included in that set. It's going to be really cool. Love the Spectra design. Just a really cool uh, product all across the board. Then we got some uh, Bowman Sterling Baseball uh, 2021, you know, a little higher-end premium product. It's going to be uh, basically uh, five packs per box, uh, six cards per pack, five autographs per box lots of uh rookies and prospects included uh lots of different color parallels are available to snatch up in that as well then we've got uh obsidian basketball i'm assuming that's going to be a super hot uh, commodity in the uh, coming weeks uh it's gonna be a, you know, a little bit higher end stuff as well uh you've got two autographs per box seven cards per box basically one pack um you know, high-end stuff. Uh, you'll have uh, 200 cards in the base set, some rookies numbered to 99 uh, or less uh, available in that product. And then what I'm most excited about is uh, one of the first products with our new crop of uh, draft picks because, of course, I'm a Rockets fan. We've got yeah. four number one draft picks. So oh, yeah. I'm looking at maybe getting into some breaks of this product and, and hopefully get, get some Rockets. But... Uh, this is going to have your top uh, rookie uh, draft class in it, um, uh, rated rookies. You're going to have some hoops uh, cards in there, select rookies and stars, uh, playoff. You know, Chronicles is always a fun product to open because it's so many different types of product all in one place. So a lot of fun. Uh, you're going to have 24 uh, uh, packs. What is it? No, two packs per box, uh, 24 cards per pack, two autographs per box, and uh, – our very own Jalen Green's going to be in the set. Uh, Kay Cunningham, the number one pick. Evan Mobley, amongst uh, a, a litany of, of other players, going to be available. So, really uh, exciting week in uh, sports card releases. Several products uh, coming in this week. So, come on by the shop and, and get yours. Yeah, and uh, it, it's funny to kind of look at the the third and fourth release you talked about. One is still a 2021 product. Yes. Uh, so, it's like because of the pandemic and other you know production things so you have like panini obsidian coming out the super high-end product like you said and uh for so that'll be like last year's rookies even though they're starting their second year <laughs> they're already That's be they'll, they'll, they'll already be uh gearing up for preseason and all that but then like you said i'm just so excited about the chronicles because it's just like a nostalgia boost whenever you go through there and and how it works is there's 13 different base sets as one base set. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so just all the like, like you mentioned the 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 oldies and goodies. Like I love like hoops and and select and rookies and stars. But then you also have just all the products that Panini's been making for the last few years. And uh, that and you know all the rookies aren't in every set, but most yeah. of the good rookies are. <laughs> so most of the good ones are in there. Absolutely. And then uh, and then. And then just to throw this out too, um, so Jalen Green's going to be in his G League Elite jersey in this, so everyone else will be college players. So if you like, if you like college players or have an affinity for any of these schools that these big name guys came from, uh, this set is definitely for you. So 
Yeah. Um, and just just fun. Uh, I, the the format threw me off because it's like twenty four cards per pack, but only two packs per box. But I guess they just do that. I guess they just want to be a little bit different with how they're doing it. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, yeah, and then uh, but like you said, two autos from guys who could be Hall of Famers. You never know. That's what's that's what's so much fun about all this stuff. Yeah. And then yeah, and then the uh, Sterling's always a great product, and you're not going to beat five autographs per box uh oh. even though it's a higher end especially at that price and then i think that panini spectra just looks great uh panini still doesn't you know have the license ability to put on uniforms and stuff but i've noticed like their car design more than makes up for it and if you use the right photo you can't really tell and some of these cards just look like fire and uh yeah, deep, deep space and solar eclipse are going to be those case hit cards that people are going to go crazy for. And then you also have Epic Legends, uh, which they highlight all-time greats like Ricky Henderson. And there wasn't a full um, checklist available yet, but I think that's going to be a good product. So uh, it's just, again, we say this every time, but, man, this hobby is so fun. There's all this stuff coming out all the time. It's it's kind of overwhelming. We're here to uh, lead you back to hey, what products to check out for? What's going on? So, uh, yeah, Preston, I really, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. So uh, any updates to uh, Adventure Begins and their uh, sports card section? Um, well, I mean, it, we're working on the uh, expansion, so hopefully that's uh, going to go according to plan and, and maybe get us open by the end of October. We were hoping the 1st of November at the latest, but uh Come on by the shop at uh, 525 Woodland Square Boulevard, Suite 130 in Conroe, off of 1488 for your boxes and packs. Or if you just want to, you know, shoot the breeze and, and talk about cards or bring something in, have me look at it. I'm happy to look at it. Uh, awesome. It's so fun. Can't wait to see that expansion and just uh, go in there and rip some packs, man. It's, it, it's yeah. a blast. All right, man, that's the end of the show. But before we go, here's your term of the week. We referred to earlier to on card auto when speaking with that big Patrick Mahomes stock market <laughs> stock card deal. An on card auto refers to when a player is signed onto the card directly rather than signed a sticker that was later placed on the card by the manufacturer. Sticker autos have become more common, so on card autos can fetch a premium. That is yes. the glossary term of the week for Cards to Yards, brought to you by Adventure Stadium and Adventure Begins. Back to you, Chaz. On behalf of Preston and Mark, I'm Chaz Graves. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you guys next week.